Hey, Mr. Scratch here. So we've got our Warrior Project back there, and not all of our parts are in, so we're going to be just doing some random stuff today. So uh, we're going to get a lot of this knocked out, just little things that need to be done, and call it a day. Just, uh, it's been a long week, so we're not going to do a whole lot, but we're going to spend a few hours on this Warrior. And uh, let me detail what we're going to do. I'll be right back. All right, so uh, we bought a perfectly straight steering shaft out of a little ATV recycle company in uh, in Utah. They shipped it. It was excellent. It's perfectly straight. That's awesome. Uh, we're going to be replacing. We got that donor part that came with quad. We're going to be replacing this one bent upper A-arm. So we're going to get that knocked out. We have, let's see here. Let me grab them. So we ordered from these guys, replacementkits.com. Um, we got a set of front wheel bearings and seals. So we're going to be doing uh, wheel bearings on both front hubs. We're going to get that knocked out. Now these guys, I went with these guys specifically um, because their bearings are supposed to be uh, NTN. Basically it's a private label NTN, which it looks like it from the orange bearing races. Um, quality bearings are extremely important. I don't want to buy just random junk because it just doesn't last. But NTN are very quality, high quality bearings. So that's the kit that we've got there. Uh, if we have time today, and I'm hoping we get to this, um, but we're also going to be doing valve clearance, and I've got a Wix uh, oil filter for this, which is part number 57935. Um, hopefully we'll drop oil and just put a filter in and kind of see what we've got in the original filter that's in there and see how bad off the motor is, because we've really got no idea what we're getting into. We're doing all this work, and this motor could be junk. Um, but that's okay. If it is, we can rebuild it. It's not a big deal. We've got that uh, ability here. So, um, yeah, we're going to get uh, steering shaft in, get this A-arm going. I'll kind of video along the way, just cut in and out and show you guys progress. And uh, it should be a really good day. We did get all the uh, um, metal that we had ground off previously and worked. We got that painted up. Uh, you kind of see it along here. We got all the wire wheeled parts uh, repainted and sprayed. And uh, that turned out really good. Now this might be interest, or this might interest some of you guys, but I found this on uh, on the Facebook group. But this Rust-Oleum Metallic, um, let me see if I can find the part number. This was almost an exact match to the factory paints. Very, very close. It's 7271 Silver Metallic, and I mean you can see. I mean, there's an age difference there, but you can see from where I sprayed to the the frame here that it's actually a pretty good pretty good match i mean close enough for what we're doing i'm happy with it so and i can just go buy this at home depot or walmart or wherever you want to get it but uh it's got a rust uh inhibitor as well in this paint so that's a good choice for this so all right so we're gonna we're gonna get on this and i'll be back all right so we got the steering shaft uh kind of sat in here now down at the bottom of the steering shaft there's actually a bearing and this bearing felt really good so we didn't replace it and there's also a seal on top so we went ahead and my son kind of blobbed grease all over it um we got grease here just to go where the seal is um i just used a uh, marine grease that i use kind of on everything but we're gonna go ahead and drop that down inside after i kind of cleaned it out and uh on the bottom when we get ready to do the bottom of this uh of this steering stem there's actually kind of a collar that goes on the bottom it goes uh, right up inside here around the threads if you can see it the threads here so this is going to kind of go this part is going to kind of go um, up over that but uh, on the bottom side here if that makes sense trying to get those angles right and then of course we have a, a castle nut on the bottom and a pin that we're gonna bend to hold that in place once we get it in so we'll be back here in a little bit all right so the steering stem's installed so we have this little bend bracket here where you actually have to bend the tabs um, onto the bolts once you get them tight and these you, you really don't tighten down very well I, I didn't have the guide here but i know you just don't tighten them down very much uh um, cause you don't want to crush this down or anything. So I put them at, if I was to ballpark it, it would probably be about, uh, oh, it, it was probably around 15 foot pounds, 14 foot pounds, something like that. A little, a little more than a standard 10 mil, but a, a little less than really cranking on these. So we got some grease up inside here. There's two seals that go in here. Uh, and I mean, we can turn okay. So that's good. Now, as I mentioned, we have this collar setup that goes down here on the bottom so we got a collar we have that washer flat washer and then we have a uh, castle nut for this so we're going to get that on there 
I need to go look up torque specs. We'll figure that out. We'll get that pinned. We put our tie rods on and that's literally, that's it for the steering stem. The tie rods, you can kind of see it. So these guys will just go up in their perspective little spots right up inside here. So it's a really, really simple job to do the stem. Just you have to tear out the plastics and stuff. Um, alignment wise, after we did our metal work, that's what I'm really happy about. Alignment wise, I mean, we got the lean, we got everything spot on for this new stem. So that bracket was all all bent up before we got that dead on. So that lines up perfectly. So, all right, uh, we're going to wrap the stem up, get that bottom piece and the and the arms torqued and we're going to we're going to move on to replacing the control arm. So we're pulling off the upper control arm and we realize that Yamaha's engineers, whoever designed the exhaust, did not talk to the guy designing the frame and suspension because this upper bolt I need about a quarter more inch to pull that control arm off. So we got to pull the exhaust uh the front little header tube off and uh then we'll be able to get that bolt out but this is what happens when companies, uh, people internally don't talk to each other. That sucks. All right, so the resolution for the swing arm was pretty simple. We just took out the two um, 10 millimeter bolts that hold the pipe to the head. And we took out, um, or we actually we just loosened the clutch cable here, dropped it down. Once we loosened the exhaust bracket, the or the clamp for it right here, we just loosened that. We're able to move the exhaust out of the way just enough so the control arm bolt slid out. So that's that's it. So that's that's a quick and easy fix. But it just kind of was annoying. You had to do that just to get a upper control arm off. So all right, we're gonna keep on working. So we got everything put away and I realized uh, when I was looking through the video, I was missing part of a video. Um, I don't know what the heck happened, but I didn't finish uh, talking about the control arm. Um, there's not much to talk about them. They're real simple. So uh, what I did once we got the bolt out, the one that hits the exhaust, you just take the brake cable out. It slips right out of this little bracket. And then there's a standard brake clip, like just like on a brake line of a car. So you pull the clip out and you can take the line out. And you take the two bolts out. Now, the ball joint is a little bit tricky. So what I recommend to people um, is when you take the castle nut off, put it back on most of the way, but leave about maybe an eighth of an inch underneath the castle nut. And then you actually end up hitting the castle nut, or you can use another nut, kind of a sacrificial nut. Hit that with a hammer to break the ball joint free. Because if you just hammer the threaded area, because there's there's uh you've got those holes on on two different sides for the cotter pin, you just end up collapsing the thread. So if you actually hit a bolt instead and leave the bolt over the threads, um, you will end up just popping it free. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it on the control arm. I just for forgot to add that into my video, so I wanted to cover those. But yeah, quick and easy. So control arm job was done. That, that, that's awesome. So another piece done. All right, so my son and I decided it'd actually be best for everybody, all, you, all the viewers out there, to show you how to change the bearings on the front of one of these hubs. It's actually a pretty easy process. Let me kind of slide the camera back just a little bit. It's actually real easy, but just a little bit time consuming. So here we go. So first we gotta take off our lugs off here and get the tire off. Go bud. Now these tires are old, flat, and this is because they've actually been sitting for on this quad for a decade. So these will get replaced well before we ride it, but we're just doing the maintenance on it, kind of as I outlined earlier today washers off we already did the other side so like i said it's pretty pretty straightforward job come on the rim's gonna stuck there we go get that out of the way we take this little piece off um we're going to we gotta get this cotter pin out let's see if we can twist this up these go in real tight for some reason now what I do with the tight cotter pins is once I get the little kind of bobby pin thing head up, I just grab onto it with pliers and of course misuse my tools. And I just hit it out. All right, so now we need a little bit bigger socket. 
we're going to take off this outer nut. That's a 22 millimeter. Okay, got that off. Now we have to take off our caliper and get our caliper off there. So it's 12 millimeter for the caliper. And let's see here. I can find. There we go. Got the whole thing. Caliper is a little bit wonky to get out. It's you got to kind of slide it past past the uh, dust guard here. So let me see if I can let go. There, get the caliper out. There. Wow, that one actually fell right off. That wasn't expected. On the other side, we actually had to use a two jaw puller. So that's telling me that this thing is probably in comparison. This hub's probably pretty shot because it took a lot to get the other one to release. This one really didn't take almost anything, it just fell off, that was cool. All right, that was a lot easier. All right, Darren, if you can get that degreased. So we're gonna just degrease the spindle, get everything off there. Now I'm gonna bend the camera down to the hub area here. I'm gonna show you what we gotta do. So first thing is we got this little uh, race right here that we just pull out. This is the small side of the bearing. So we have a little, little uh, seal race that we take out. Now we've got to get out the seals. And let me find my tool for that. <laughs> Love it when I can't find my tool. So where is my little chisel? There it is. Okay. So I'm just going to take a chisel, nothing big. I'm going to get it right under this um, seal lip and I'm just going to kind of tap it with the hammer. Uh, almost there. There we go. Seals out. Now you can see the bearings. Now these are usually serviceable. You could flush the grease out and regrease them if you wanted. And I can actually feel it. It's clicking real hard there. So that's not a good bearing. That's kind of crappy and old. And if you can see up on the spindle, my son is re-greasing the spindle. So we're kind of doing this quick time with two helpers. So he's re-greasing just the spindle. That's always a good thing to do. Uh, especially up on here, that's where the seal rides. So that was, here was the small seal. Now we have to get out the big seal. I don't find I need to take off the, the rotor on this guy. We can do almost all this work without bending the rotor or compromising the rotor. So anyways, um, let me put this in here. We'll take this seal out. Almost. Come on. There we go. Got the second seal out. And looks like the seal spring fell out in there. All right, so that's the other side. Now, it's pretty, this side's pretty tight, but like I said, I'm kind of surprised the whole thing just fell off. That was kind of weird, so. All right, to get the bearings out, um, we get the big side out first. Now, what I do for that, the tool that I use for that is kind of a big flat um, punch here. So we're gonna put this down, and I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but you can go down and get the edge of the bearing and then you can tap the bearing out so you got to catch the edge we're going to go to one side we're going to go to the other side and go to the other side and we're going to keep tapping it out now now i, I kind of pushed and i'll show you what i pushed in a minute but i pushed it out of the way on the inside kind of bent pushed and now i can grab the lip of that bearing so we're going to tap a little bit here i'd be surprised if that came out Slip. Okay, let's keep going back and forth on this. Just spin it at 180 degrees as we tap it down. It's moving. Okay. 
Now you heard the sound change, kind of the pitch of the bearing. That's because we've hit the flat. We basically hit the concrete. So we've got to now kind of lift this up a little bit and then we're going to knock out the bearing. So I'm going to use just two um, bearing plates or press plates out of a kit that I've got. This old Harbor Freight kit that I love. And we're just going to set it right on each of the bolts. Not a big deal. Cool. Bearing is out. Now, this is a piece I was talking about that I was moving out of the way. So this sits up inside here. You can see it just kind of sits down inside there and gets pressed in with the bearing. Now, what I was doing is when I was pushing out of the way, it kind of floats. So I was pushing it to one side, then pushing it to the other, pushing it to the other, so that I could get to the bearing so that I could tap on it. So the tap itself was going about like this in the bearing, and then I was going to this side, and I was going back and forth to drive that, that bearing out. So now that that one's done, we're gonna do the same thing to this side, but this one I can do a little differently. I can use one of my parts from my, my little press plate set. I can put it down in here, kind of like that, and we'll just knock that bearing right out of there. So there it is. That is our other bearing. So on the inside, you now have a kind of a clean hub, no bearings at all. Okay, so now that we got these out of the way, my son, if you can see it, he's adding just a little bit of grease to that little bullet looking thing that goes in the inside that wraps around the spindle and he's gonna put grease in the inside of that. And we also need, let me see the grease gum, bub. We're gonna grease up the inside here where the bearing goes in. We don't ever want this to rust because then your bearing gets stuck in there and it's a big pain in the butt if you ever have to change them again. I don't expect, as old as this warrior is, I think this will be the last bearing job it ever sees. It's probably the first bearing job it's ever seen, but it's probably gonna be the last. So we're gonna grease up the insides where our bearings go. Real good. And we're gonna kinda go in reverse order. So we're gonna set this back down. We're gonna take one of our brand new bearings in this, uh, uh, replacementkits.com and no I'm not sponsored no they didn't give me these I paid full price for these they don't even know I'm doing this video um, I just found they were the only place that actually called out what bearings they were using online and and they said NTN so well, it's, it's a private label for NTN I believe them we got orange seals on these it's kind of a little bit odd but um, they're calling it out so at least they know bearings if they can say hey these are actually NTN that that means a lot to me because I, I don't like crap bearings and NTN makes fantastic bearings so um, yeah, so we're going to put this guy in, so we're going to do the reverse procedure. Uh, let's see, I don't, we're going to probably tap this in. So again, I've got grease on the inside of the hub itself, and we're going to gently tap this bearing back in, because since I'm not pushing all the way on the outside, I don't want to put a lot of force on this. It doesn't take a lot. Notice how that sound changed at the end? That means the bearing is stopped. So it doesn't take a lot to put that bearing in. So that's good there. We're gonna take our small seal that we have in our little kit. We got two different size seals. Okay, we're gonna take our small seal and we are going to grease up just a little bit on the outside of this seal. And we're definitely going to put a lot on the inside of the seal. Now, we've already got the spindle grease, but I always do quite a bit of grease on the seals of, uh, or on the lips of new seals here. So, I'm going to put this guy in. Sometimes you can get him by hand, sometimes you can't. This one feels a little bit tight. That's okay. We are going to use a small plate again out of my little. Uh, press kit. We're going to put this right over the top of the seal, a little seal driver. That feels, feels good. Okay. 
My son's going to clean this up. This is the little race that goes inside there, a little spacer. So he's going to clean this up and get the outside grease, and then we're going to stick that in there. But for now, let's go ahead and flip this guy over since we got the outside done. We're going to take our... Whoop, I dropped it. My fault. Super greasy. And we got to wipe it off. Got dirt on it. That's my bad. There we go. So we've got our little bullet assembly. This gets dropped in first. Don't forget that part because that's... It sucks if you don't, or if you forget it. So we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna take our larger bearing, and we're going to drive this one in. I've got a driver, I believe, that's the right size. Could even in this one. Yeah, that's actually the exact size. We're gonna tap this in, and again, you'll hear it when once we're all the way down, so you can hear a difference. And I don't know if it picks it up on camera. But it's something you know when you tap in bearings that you can hear, so. This is uh, rust pretty bad. Okay, uh, go get, so my son just said that it's kind of rusted a little bit on this seal. Uh, oh, that's okay, bud, that's not bad. I was gonna say, we can get a little red scotch bright and clean up the rust if we need to, but it doesn't look bad. He was just showing it to me. So. Oop, there it is. You heard how the sound changed and we'll make sure this bearing is perfectly level yep we're good nice feel to it um, so that part's done and now the last part is going to be doing our other seal our last little seal which is the inside now we're going to by the way, the grease I'm using, if you guys are wondering, you did notice it's blue, so all you techs out there know it's probably marine grease I'm using, and you're right. Um, I use Lucas Marine Grease. It's a calcium, um, oh, I forget the exact name for it, sulfonate grease, and that's what I like to use on everything that I do. I know these bearings probably have a lithium in them, but I'm not greasing the whole inside of this. Um, but I use this calcium grease, and it's this stuff holds up really well, this Lucas Marine to, to this kind of stuff, so... All right, we're gonna get a little bit bigger tap here. Actually, maybe I'll use that one. Yeah, we can reuse this. And we're just gonna drive the seal in. Okay, there we have it. So that seals in. This thing's good. Get a little bit of dirt off of there. Make sure there's no dirt in it. All right, son, can I see this? All right, he's got that greased up nice. Now, looks like some of the corrosion's on the outside, so it looks like the seal lip rides on the end. So we'll put the shinier side down, leave the slightly corroded side to the outside, and we're just going to push that in. And that's what seals up. Boy, I may be wrong on that. Let me take a look here. That seal up. Nope. Seal rides right in the middle, so that's definitely the way we want to go. Now, all we have left is simply the reverse steps of what we did. We're going to take this hub. We're going to put this whole assembly on. We're going to get it torqued down. And that is it for the hub assembly it's really that quick and easy you just got to kind of it helps if you see the process so i hope this helps some of you guys with your warriors a lot of other quads are the same exact way it's really easy to do the hub so um yeah so we're going to button this up i'm going to shut off the video and we're going to get on to some other projects once we get this reassembled i think the last project we had lined up for the day darren do you remember i think it was uh we we're going to do oil valve oil. clearance Oh yeah, we we're gonna do an oil change and then we we're gonna do valve clearance. Yeah, so that, that was the last project of the day. So shut the camera off, we'll get this side reassembled and then we're gonna check what the heck um, comes out of this thing oil-wise. We got no idea, but it's probably gonna be pretty nasty. So we'll check back in a little bit. Thanks. All right, so we've got uh, 19 mil and we're gonna pull out on the bottom here the oil screen assembly on this motor. So this thing has not been drained or anything for 10 years since the original owner parked it and I can't even imagine what the heck we're gonna run into in this screen but it's gonna give us give us an idea what we're gonna find with this engine and I'm a little bit afraid because it's it's an unknown we're going off what the what the guy said 
He said it ran great up until, you know, of course he rolled it, which it shows it wasn't drivable after he rolled it, so it had to have been running before it rolled. We just don't know what surprises we're gonna have because we don't know if this thing's never been maintained, if it's never been had an oil change. <laughs> you know, I imagine it has, but some people really neglect their machines. Oh, there it goes. That oil, for 10 year old oil, actually doesn't look bad. Wow, okay. Well, there's that. Nothing like I expected it. I thought we were gonna have a black, nasty mess. It's really runny oil. It was like a zero weight almost, or a five weight. But man, that's actually really clean. Um, got kind of a mess here. Let me grab a paper towel. Figure out what we got on this screen in a second. Let's see if our screen's all gummed up with clutch material or what we got. Boy, that was really surprising to me. Like I said, that oil doesn't look bad at all. It's not even super dark. Oh wow. That screen is perfect. It looks like this guy maintained it really well. I'm totally surprised. Well, cool. We'll get the oil out of this thing and uh, put the screen back in and I guess we're gonna pull the oil filter. We'll take a look at that. But as of right now, I don't have very many worries. This, this is awesome. All right. All right, so the filter screen was, was amazing as we kind of showed before. So now we're just gonna do the filter, the oil filter. And uh, these are our five millimeter Allens. So we'll take these guys out. Whew, wind just blew my paper towel and my bolt. There you go. Can't wait to get rid of that nasty, rusty chain. All right, we take the filter out. I don't know if there's anything left in there. I doubt there's any check drain back valve or anything system in this. So, yeah, we're not really dripping much out of the filter, kind of as I expected. It's just gonna come out the skid plate down this side. So we got our three bolts out. Get my paper towel relayed out here. Take our cover off. We got a little bit of material sitting in the bottom of the filter housing. A little bit of black, a little bit of clutch material and stuff that ran out of filter, it's really not bad. It's actually very normal. I'm not seeing anything that was out of the blue in this housing. Where it looks completely spot on what I would expect. So let's take a look here. Take a look at our filter. Oh, this is just a filter screen. I can't remember if this was original or not. If they did a screen or what it was, the original material, but this is just a metal screen. I don't know if that's aftermarket or what that is. There's a little bit of material in there, clutch material and so forth. You can see it in there. We got a little bit of metal shavings, but that's all pretty normal for a machine that gets the hell beat out of it off-road. Get away from me, B. All right, so let's take a look at our new actual filter, which is actually an oil filter. We'll set these caps and stuff aside. Let's get this cleaned out. We'll take a look at the difference in the filter. So that's more of a screen, not really a filter, more of a screen. Okay, the wick setup. We got one O-ring. We have an actual filter. Well, actually, this is identical to the other one, so it's more of a screen material too. It's a filter, but it's more of a screen. This is probably, my guess is the other one is a wicks too. Both of these were wicks, so oh well, maybe not. That one doesn't seem to have a part number on it, but eh, whatever. Same thing. That's cool. 
we got a new o-ring for our cap i'm not sure what the red o-ring goes to well i think that might be for a different application and we don't even know if this one's gonna fit nope this is too big I guess it's not for the same application. We'll give it a shot, see if it'll go in, but I don't think this is right either. So, got our O-ring out. I think the one that came with this Wix is just too big. Oh, no. Actually went in. Cool. All right. We got our new filter. A little screen filter actually is just a screen I can see right through the material so interesting okay so we're gonna put that in place I believe that's how it went in okay. yeah definitely went in that way and then we're going to get our cap and get this put on. I'm a little concerned here that doesn't feel like it's seating on there quite right. That one goes on pretty straight. I don't see any differences other than a Wix has a large spring assembly that kind of looks like a drain back valve. Maybe that's what's pushing on this and why I'm fighting it a little bit. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Put this guy back on. And that's it. We're going to snug up these bolts and we would say, I would say our uh, oil filter change is done. So far, no surprises. I got no complaints. Everything looks really good. It does look like this guy took uh, relatively good care of this quad. So pretty happy about that. And uh, next up, we're going to be diving into valve clearance, just seeing what our valve clearance looks like. See how far off that is before... Um, we slowly start our planning stages to get this thing started. We've still got a carb rebuild to do. we got a lot of other things to do, but uh, we'll uh, check our valve clearance and just kind of see where we're at. So, Okay, so we're ready to do our valve clearance. It's a really simple job. All we really need is a feeler gauge, a 5 millimeter Allen, and a little 10 millimeter box end. And then I use a really small set of needle nose pliers I have back here. But for the Warrior, it's really quick and easy. So we pull off this cover right here for the flywheel. Um, that's that little cover there. It's just a four or five millimeter Allen. So we pull that off. And we have to pull off um, our timing gear cover here. And the reason for that is first, we well, we need to line up a mark down inside this hole. And I can't tell if you can see it but there's a T and a line on there and you can see the line and the T that has to line up to the line that's kind of grooved into the case on here we have our line here and this needs to line up to this little notch okay that means we're on a compression stroke and we're at top dead center so everything looks really good there and all I'm going to show you how to do is just the intake side I know there's a million videos on timing but we're just going to cover this in the warrior um, all we end up doing is loosening this 10 millimeter bolt. We're gonna adjust this little square top uh, tappet piece until we can get um, our feeler gauge in there. Now, the Warrior, it's, I'm looking over here at a cheat sheet here, it's 0.06 to 0.10 millimeters for the intake, and we have uh, 0.16 to 0.20 on the exhaust, so we're looser on the exhaust. Now, what happens to valves, why we have to do this, is as the valve hammers into the head and keeps opening and shutting, it actually, the clearances tighten up so they get tighter and tighter, especially on a hot side or the exhaust side. But we'll go ahead and adjust the intake. Now I grab my feeler gauge set. Um, I'm going right in between the 0.6 and 10. I'm just gonna do a 0.08. That's gonna be good. I'm gonna be happy with that. I don't wanna get it on the tight side because then it just gets too tight quicker. So I'm gonna go 0.08. And then on the exhaust side, I'll go somewhere in between that 0.16 and 0.20 specification, uh, depending on what I've got on my feeler gauge set. But um, 
I'll be right back. My son son's gonna grab the camera, and I'll just show you guys how I uh, how I do this. Okay, so what we're gonna do? We gotta loosen this tin, and it's loose already because I pre loosened it. Camera magic. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll take my um, 0.08 millimeter. I'm gonna slip it in here. And then I'm going to adjust or tighten this top, top tap it until it just barely grabs and that I can slide it back and forth. So that's kind of what we want. Now, since I don't have a wrench, a little square headed wrench, a tap it wrench for this, I'm going to go ahead and put this 10 mil back on and I'm going to hold this with needle nose pliers. Okay, got that German spec good and tight. And uh, should be able to wiggle this wrench. There we go, right in there, and it's it's got some a little bit of tug to it. So we are spot on. So our intake valve clearance is now good. And I'm going to do the same thing that I just did, but it's harder to camera on the exhaust side. But like I said, we're going to go in between that 0.16 and 0.20, and that's it. That means our valve clearance is set, and um, I think we're going to be done for the day. That's all the projects we wanted to get done. I don't think there's anything else we wanted to get done today. So we did a lot on this Warrior. And appreciate you guys watching. If you like my crazy random videos, please subscribe. I'm just going to be keep. I mean, just going to keep doing different projects as uh, time progresses. So, uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.